welcome to NOC TV, where we interview inspiring entrepreneurs. And this is our new series about tech African business people, where we'll bring you all the variety of tech entrepreneurs that the continent has. Today we have um, Antonia Ani. And uh, Antonia is a user experience consultant, a speaker, author, and mentor. Her current focus is on ed tech or education technology uh, and e commerce. So, Antonia, thank you very much for coming to NOC TV. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be on the show. Thank you. So, tell me what a user you know, experience consultant is. What is user consult experience? User experience is an approach to design which we can take as an approach to most things in life. So basically it's about putting the people we are designing something for as part of the process. So we're not just designing objects or services because we can. We're designing them because they're people who are going to use them and they have goals and aspirations. So we bring those people into the process of design so they become partners, we call it co-designing in a way. But the main thing, the fundamental thing about user experience is that we are always bringing those people in our process. So we, we do things like research just to make sure that we're getting their feedback, we're getting their goals, we're understanding who they are mm -hmm. and we're designing properly to fit their goals and aspirations. So if um, there is no user experience design which is embedded in any of um, the app or you know, object that we know now and love, yeah. what will happen without those um, uh, you know, technologies? Usually it's frustration. <laughs> you, we, we get a lot of people who use things because there's no other option. So that's what has happened in the past where a lot of um, software companies or even just basic services like your customer service um, uh, you go into a shop and people don't, you know, the, the experience is not good. Where there is no option, people just accept it, but they're frustrated. And, and that hinders some of the things they're trying to achieve. But where there is a plethora of options, now, you know, everyone can sort of start up a business. And so if, if I want to have a phone, for example, there are lots of options. So if the experience I'm using, um, for a phone I'm using, for example, it's not good, I can easily turn to the, to the next brand. So that is what we're getting now. So people now have options and they will be able to move from thing to thing okay. instead of just sticking to the frustration yeah. that they face with a particular service. Or so it's not a nice to have, it's a must. It is a must. It's a must. It it is must be cool. uh, so tell me, where did your passion for ed tech and e-commerce come from? Um, it, it's, it's strange because when I was growing up, I never saw teaching as something that was what going into. I remember telling my friends that yeah, I could never be a teacher, you know, that sort of thing. But it was when I left university and then I went to uh, the sort of service that we undertake in Nigeria, which is called the NYSC. Um, and I was posted to a school system, and that was when it became to click in my mind because I've always, anyways, enjoyed telling people about stuff, explaining things. And but it clicked in my mind then that this could actually be something I am involved in at a, a deeper level. But I didn't do anything about that until I came here to the UK and I worked for a few years. And it, my mind always kept going back that do you know what this is where you um, this is where your passions are in in trying to help people build something of themselves. So it's not just teaching um, or learning the skills, but it's about helping them figure out what their goals are and aspirations and helping them achieve those goals. So giving them the skills that help them achieve those things. Yeah. So, so, so why tech? Why have, have you, you know, added tech to the, the side of the teaching? I think technology is something that I've grown up with. I, I, um, digital technology in particular, because I grew up um, gaming, um, playing video games, and that just was a part of my life. There was no sense of there is something separate. We grew up um, with with the internet and all sorts of things, so it just became something, another tool to, to um, that I could use to um, achieve some of these things. So that was it. Was just great that you know all my the things I love and all the things that I've been involved in are coming together in a 
educational technology. Mm -hmm. So you also brought um, Code Academy here in the UK and uh, this is about to give support to learning to, and to facilitate collaboration. Tell me what actually is Code Academy and uh, how does it help? Code Academy, Academy is an educational tech business which is all about teaching people how to code. So they teach people from the basic, which is HTML, CSS, that's web development, to Python, JavaScript, which is for back-end, server-side kind of technologies. So they try to give it the whole range in really easy ways to follow. So it's an online system at the moment. The reason why I brought the Meetup group to the UK was because it's not just enough for people to learn online. We, we, we're observing that online is great because it spreads to a lot of people, but you know, to, to have a great experience in learning, you need that support of other people and that is why I think it was important to have something physical. So we're holding these meetups every month um, from the basics, so we're taking really basic courses and then we're also splitting groups, so on a particular day we would have people who are just beginners, people who are intermediate and those who are advanced and we have the advanced people helping out the other people who are just starting to learn how to code. So it's just great to have that support and we have a great network of mentors who come in on the day to help people answer their questions and just see them through their projects. So that is um, a, a great thing to have and to see people collaborate. Mm -hmm. Is there any code academy in Africa? There, there are a variety of schools that teach people how to code in, in the physical world. Code Academy, because it's on the internet, is accessible to everybody, wherever they are. I think it's about helping people understand that those opportunities are there and then helping them um, in the physical as well shape what they're trying to do with it. Mm -hmm. So um, I would be glad uh, and I'll be happy to actually start something that is focused because sometimes we think because it's on the internet, it's um, it's all right for everybody, but there are lots of cultural, contextual things that we have to take into consideration on the continent, and I think that is something that we have to look more into. Mm -hmm. So tell me, why did you become an entrepreneur? Why are you not just working for somebody else and you start to work for yourself? <laughs> I've always had it in my mind that I wasn't the um, 9 to 5 kind of person. I always struggled with it. I've worked in the UK for 6 five years now. And I've worked in that capacity, going to work at a set time, coming back at a set time. And I've always had issues, I've struggled with that because I'd rather be active doing things and my mind is going to many different things. And growing up, one of the things that sort of stuck in my head in terms of how I see myself working was as a consultant. Mm -hmm. And then I actually went into a job that explored that. So I was consulting for a bit and it was just beyond, it was not... The work was great, but I just didn't feel okay there, um, and I and I decided to quit, and then decided to explore the things I was more passionate about, things that I was willing to suffer for, because I, that is what passion means, actually, suffering for the things that give you joy. So that was what I explored, and then I I see that my work as an entrepreneur is not just so that I can build a business and you know be my own boss and things. It's so that I can support other people and I think that has been a strong um, a, a kind of thread that has always gone through my mind from, from a young age. That sort of consulting to support other people. Um, there's a, this popular quote that says, if you, don't, um, if, if you don't build your own dreams, someone will hire you to build their own dreams, something like that. And I, and I thought, what if my dream is to help people build their own dreams? That is my dream and that is what I... I I, I'm doing as an entrepreneur. That's what it allows me to do, to help people build their own dreams. Mm -hmm. So what are the kind of stories uh, that Africa has at the moment that excite you the most in relation to the tech space? There are a lot of stories. One of them has to be Andela, which is Nigeria based. I, I, I admit I will be biased in Nigeria at the moment. Um, but they, are, they have a program which is creating the new generation of people who can code and develop software. But it's not just about the skill to code, for example, it's about business skills, management skills, a lot of skills that, professional skills that I have to say are sort of lacking on the continent because we tend to, you know, sometimes just do things, oh, we can just do this in a way that we feel like. But 
what um, Andela is doing is creating a well-rounded people that can compete on the international scene. Mm -hmm. So they've started in Nigeria, they have um, a group of people in Kenya as well. So that is, is really exciting to see that um, coming up. And just the fact that people don't feel like they have to go through the four years or five year system of you know, university before making something of themselves and they come out and then they're looking for jobs and stuff, is that you can, through a series of you know, focused learnings across um, one or two years, of, of which you would be working in that capacity, so you'd be learning and working at the same time. It, it's just it's just amazing, and I and I really hope to see more of that happening. Mm -hmm. So, who are the people that are they um, they accepting the program? Are they young people, or is like everybody who feel like becoming a yes. you know? Or how how do they select people to? Do you have a, any idea of how they you know who are the people who enroll in this uh, academy? They they have. I don't think they have a, an age limit, yeah. but definitely a lot of people who enroll between, most people are between 19 and 35, but it's it's really um, inclusive of everyone. They've got targeted programs as women, because most times when you talk about coding, and you, you definitely get more guys coming in through the door, but if until you have that focus target on women, and then you have a lot more women, but they do have that inclusive mix, which I really like. Mm -hmm. So, and obviously you are talking about women, which just uh, led me to ask you, actually, you know, the media and um, the fact reports the lack of women in technology, yeah. both here in the UK and in Africa. How has, it, how has been your experience as women in technology? Um, the funny thing is, I, I never used to think about that at all. I mean, I have come through secondary school, university as someone in the science class. I went into engineering, was in an engineering class. We're not a lot of women, but I never saw it as there was some barrier or something of the sort. I just felt, you know, people would do what they love to do. They would go where they want to go. And it was my father who actually made, um, suggested I go for the program. Uh, which I rebelled a bit, <laughs> but but went um, true with it. But coming to the UK, I see that it was like when I came here that I realized that there was that issue of women in STEM or women in tech, and um, it, I said my eyes started to open, and I not that I felt like I was being affected myself, but I could see more and more of especially younger people what they were being fed in terms of what they could do, their ability it is. And it was sad because I didn't grow up like that. My mom um, is a maths graduate. She also has a master's in, in mathematics and statistics. So I've always been surrounded by people who didn't have any limits in that sense. So it was sad to see that other people were being faced with um, mm -hmm. limitation based on messages they get, what is happening in schools, you know, the role models that being exposed to, not a lot of women as well. So, those are the issues that I, I strongly see happening mm -hmm. you know, in the space. Yeah, and uh, obviously as an entrepreneur and someone who has your own business, you understand that of success always is about the network that you have. How have you been supported throughout this journey and and if you do you have a mentor um, supported you throughout this journey? Tell me. Aside from my family, as I said, I've, I was, I'm lucky enough to be in a family that supports each other and we have, my mom is very, has always been an entrepreneur. She was a teacher initially and she moved, she was, she's always been an entrepreneur, selling all sorts of things. Um, so I already had that. But in the UK, focused on my career here, I've had a mentor who is Lola Oyelayo, the head um, director of UX and strategy at Head London. She um, has been really helpful in just helping me see the perspective of being in the UK, what it looks like, and just also um, helping me to understand the size that we tend not to really talk about, which is financial. And I have to say, a lot of women and women groups focus on a lot of things, empowerment, all this stuff, but they don't talk about finance. And for any business to work, to grow, for us to leave, we need money. And, you know, it was... That, that great aspect that um, I've gotten from her, and just knowing that there's someone that is, that, that is from your background or looks like you, just having that representation has been really, really 
really helpful for me and you know she's, she's a great person and I'm really really happy that she's supported me. So how did you find your mentor here in the UK? A lot of the things you have to be proactive about. Um, some people and like myself initially you always think that things are going to come to you or someone's going to spot you somewhere and lift you out but in terms of a lot of things that would advance your career and yourself as a person you need to be proactive to get it out there mm -hmm. so from the start when i started my career in ux here i looked for online ux people that related to me so i found a nigerian guy who was doing ux he had done it for a number of years and i emailed him just right off the bat that like, this is why i am this is what I'm looking for. And it helped me in terms of shaping my CV and you know what to look for in jobs and things, which was great. And then Lola, who I've known online for a number of years, but I didn't know her that much. She emailed me about a job and then we started emailing back and forth. And then one day I asked, I was like, would you be my mentor? <laughs> And she was like, great, um, I'm happy to do so. And, and that's how I've always been. I have another mentor in Nigeria who is um, a director at Intel and he also teaching me about financial stuff. I asked him as well, like, would you mentor me? You, you really have to be true to yourself and figure out and be honest about the things you lack, honest about the things you want to grow into and look at people out there and see if they have those qualities that you want to. Because they are really different from me. They are, I would even say, opposite of me, but they have things that I absolutely appreciate. They're, they're very detail focused, meticulous. Those are the things that I want to go into, and that is why I pursue them. <laughs> That's great. So tell me, yes, so you just talked about you know being out there, being very proactive in uh, putting yourself forward. How do you think personal branding is important when you are in this business um, to? to build something for yourself and get people on board. How is it? It is, very, it is so important because everything you do comes back to you as a person. Can people trust you? What do you, what do you give off in terms of who you are? Are you, um, you know, of a high standard in terms of your work? Everything ties back to you. So I think it's really, really important that we start to think much more about how we're putting ourselves out there. If people search me online, definitely UX is one of the, going to be one of the first things they would see, which I'm happy about because <laughs> that is who I, you know, that is who I am yeah. in an aspect. But it is really, really key that everything we do should be should be tied in that sense that when someone thinks about you, what comes to mind? We, we really have to do more. I personally have to do more around it. And this month, I'm actually taking some time to polish up my, my presence online and make, you know, put all the things that's sort of hanging in the sidelines and bring it all together, work on that, and then launch for the next year. Mm -hmm. So, um, what is your life philosophy? How do you see the world? <laughs> oh, okay. Through world? many lens, through many lens, but I think the fundamental for me, uh, and someone might say, oh, Africans, but uh, my faith in God, I just think that um, no matter what we do, just knowing that we have that anchor of, of someone who loves us beyond our abilities, be, as in we didn't have to work for anything to deserve that love. I think it's something that really pushes me out there to do stuff that, you know, I'm not being judged, I'm not being um, beaten down if I don't do X, Y, Z. Actually, when you've been given an abundance of something, it's easier for you to just give to other people as well. And I think that is what, you know, is a fundamental for me. Mm -hmm. um, some other things that I look to um, in terms of viewing the world is that just being uh, kind and reaching out to people it's something I'm, I have to wake up every day and be like, this is, you know, what I have to do. You don't think that, oh, I've been nice all this past years, you know, I can take a break. It's something that you have to keep, you wake up and be a part of, be responsible in that sense. So being kind, I think, is, is really important. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously we touched about Africa and what excites you about Africa earlier. What are some of perhaps the success stories or opportunities that British businesses can be involved in in Africa? Is there something that you can see how British and Africa can partner? 
there are so many things to be done. I know in the past when people are coming from here, it's always like, oh, aid and charity, things like that. But there is so much to be done in terms of developing each other. People here need to understand more about what's happening on the continent. They need to understand the cultures and you know those nuances. And those on the continent need skills that people here have. As a, a woman in tech here in the UK, what I'm trying to do now with the Women in Tech Group Africa Group is to connect people here and in, in, on the continent so that we can have that exchange of skills. One thing that I want to happen, for example, is because I'm Nigerian, there's a tendency that we stick to Nigeria and that's all we know. But I don't know much about the other countries on the continent, Rwanda, Uganda, Togo, Cameroon. You know, we need to um, talk more with each other, we need to exchange ideas, we need to see our differences, we also need to see our similarities. And I think that that is something that people here in, in the diaspora can help um, facilitate um, in several ways because we come here as a mix. We're not in our different countries when we're over here. So we meet each other just <laughs> as an outside country um, and, and then we can, you know, connect that back to the continent. There's so much to do in tech and business um, that I, I can't even exhaust it here. So what is your message, for example, to African entrepreneurs and people in Africa perhaps who are experiencing different challenges but also some opportunities? What would be your message to those African entrepreneurs? There's challenges everywhere. There will always be challenges. Life, that is life. What you need to do is to push through, to focus on the, the process, what you're going through, why you're doing it and what you aim to achieve. I think that just being, putting yourself out there, knowing that this is something you're willing to um, suffer for, something you're willing to you know, go through those challenges for because they would always be there. Um, and you know, even if you fail, you can try again. As long as you're alive, there is hope. Mm. There is hope. <laughs> That's good. We are coming to the end of this interview. Is there anything else that you want to add that I didn't ask you? Oh yes, um, just about what we're doing in terms of Women in Tech Africa and um, I've got a platform called Platforms for Women which is trying to bring together different women groups that exist. You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe how many they are but they are a lot. So these are women who are doing things to help in three ways. One is to increase the, the women coming into technology and STEM and also to help those to support those who are already there because they're facing a set of challenges that are different from those who want to come in and then to support those who are transitioning from different careers so those who want to become entrepreneurs, those who are coming from um, other um, sectors into technology, into digital and supporting those people so those are the three main areas and what Platforms for Women is trying to do is to see how best these different networks can help each other collaborate because it's only when we're that strong as a network that change can happen on a massive scale. Mm -hmm. Fragmentation will not solve anything, so we need to connect. And then the Women in Tech Africa group is trying in three ways to help digital technology grow in Africa, to also grow African women um, who are out here and let the world know that we are African women, we have skills, and we have so much to give and contribute to the world. Okay, thank you very much. So how people can connect with you if they want to get involved in any of your association? What's the best way to connect with you? The best way is Twitter. <laughs> I'm always on Twitter, Tuniani. Very simple to remember. Um, you can get me by email. I'm always happy to take emails and I would reply in a day or two. Um, they can also contact me by LinkedIn. The profile is up there, so I'm happy, happy, very happy to support people that are interested in these things. Okay, thank you thank very you much, Antonia, for your time here. Yeah, it was a pleasure to be with you. Thanks for having me on the show. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, so that's it for today. Now, Antonia and I would love to hear from you. Please leave your comments below and uh, tell us what was perhaps one of the key takeaways you had from this conversation.